Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to find the average value of this function, h of x equals cosine to the fourth power of x times the sine of x over the interval zero pi. Let's go ahead and go through it very carefully. Solution. We'll start by writing down the formula for the average value of a function over an interval. So f, then I'll put a little subscript here, ABE for average is equal to 1 over b minus a times the definite integral of f of x dx from a to b. And so in our particular problem, we already have all of these things. So a here is going to be 0, and b is going to be pi. And instead of f of x, we have h of x, but this here is going to be our f of x. So we'll go ahead and write down the formula again. So f sub a v e, so the average value of a function, is equal to 1 over, so here we have uh, b, which is pi, this is pi minus, and then we have 0. And we're going from 0 to pi, and then we have the cosine of x to the fourth power times the sine of x dx. So we're here and we have to integrate this. So this is just going to be uh, integration by u substitution. We're going to let u be the piece that's being raised to the power. In this particular case, that would be the cosine function. So we'll set u equal to cosine x. Now we have to compute du, which is the derivative. So we're basically taking the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of u is du. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x dx. Now when you get here in a substitution problem, what you want to do is you want to make this look like what's in your integral. So you'll notice there's no negative sign here, right? So what you do is you just divide both sides or multiply by negative 1. And so we end up with negative du equals sine x dx. Good stuff. And so now you see this here matches perfectly what we have here, right? So sine x dx is negative du. Everything is 100% perfect. Super awesome. Now, there's something else we have to do. Because we made a u substitution and we have a definite integral, that means we have limits of integration. These are x limits of integration. We have to turn them into u limits. So I like to do that down here on the side and carefully show my work. So when x is 0, I underline it just for clarity. What is the value of u? So you take your x value and you plug it in here into your equation that defines u. So u is equal to the cosine of 0, which is equal to 1. So I'm going to write it again, u equals 1, just for clarity. And then when x equals pi, again, go back to your equation where we defined u. So u is equal to the cosine of pi which is negative 1, so u is negative 1. Now, if you have trouble computing these cosine values, um, you can use a calculator, or I think it's better to fall back on using your mind. So recall that on the unit circle, the unit circle is a circle centered at the origin of radius 1. Every ordered pair in the circle can be presented by a pair of trig functions, in particular, cosine of theta, sine of theta. And we have various angles here, 0, pi over 2, pi etc. So if we're looking at the cosine of 0, so here's 0, the ordered pair here is 1 comma 0. So cosine is the x-coordinate on the unit circle, so the cosine of 0 is 1. Likewise here, the ordered pair would be negative 1 comma 0. Cosine is the x-coordinate on the unit circle, so the cosine of pi is negative 1. So that's how you compute those using your mind. That's how I did it without using my calculator. Okay, let's go back to our problem, which is computing the average value of this function over this interval. So I'm going to go ahead and write down f, a, a f sub a v again. So the average value of a function. All right, so what is this going to be? It's going to be 1 over pi. And then let's think about what's happening here. So here um, we have sine x dx, and then here we have negative du. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to replace sine x dx with negative du. So I'm just going to put the negative here like this. Okay, just like that on the outside. Then we have the definite integral from 0 to pi. But when x is 0, u is 1. So we're going to put a 1 here. 
And when x is pi, u is negative 1, so we're going to put a negative 1 here. And then here we have u to the fourth power. And the sine x dx, well, we said that was negative du. We already took out the negative sign, so that's just du. So just to recap, sine x dx became negative du, right there. And then u was cosine, so that become, becomes u to the fourth power, right there. Really nice, right? Okay, so now what's happening? Well, we have this definite integral here, and there's just a really cool trick that you can do that I want to show you because we can do it and you can't always do it. So basically you can flip the limits of integration and then just change the sign. So since we have a negative here, watch this. The negative goes away. And then we can just go from negative one to one. So you can do that, okay? You can do that because whenever you change these, you get a negative out front. But there's already a negative here, so it becomes a positive. If that was confusing, the formula says something like this. If you have, say, the integral from A to B, f of x dx, this is the same as the opposite of the integral from b to a, f of x dx. And this is really easy to prove uh, using the definition of the definite integral. Uh, basically, you use the definition and you factor out a negative sign. Um, very simple, very powerful, and kind of convenient. Now we can integrate this. We can use something called the power rule for integration, which basically says that whenever you have something to a power, as long as that power is not negative 1, you add 1 to the exponent and then divide by that same result. So here we have the average value of a function is going to be 1 over pi. So here you add 1, so it'll be u to the 5 over 5. And then going from negative 1 to 1. You drop the integration sign, you drop the du when you get to this step, right? So really important to uh, not write those things down. I feel like I'm running out of room, but I think I can, I can squeeze it in. We'll make it work. So this is 1 over pi. So I'm going to leave this factored outside, and then we're going to plug in the top number first. You always plug in that top number first. So it's 1 to the 5th, which is just 1, but I'll write it as 1 to the 5th, minus, and then negative 1 to the 5th over 5, just like that. Okay, so this is the average value of a function, and this is equal to 1 over pi. So whenever you have um, a negative number being raised to an odd power, it's going to stay negative. So 1 to the 5th is 1, and then it's going to stay negative. Negative and negative is positive. And then, so that's just going to be uh, one-fifth. Likewise, this is one-fifth. So you get one-fifth plus one-fifth. Right, negative and negative is positive. That's because it's odd, okay, because it's odd. So again, negative one to the fifth is negative one. In general, negative one to an odd integer is going to be negative one, okay? And then negative one to an even integer is one. One-fifth plus one-fifth, let's not mess up here is two-fifths. So this is one over pi times two-fifths. Now we're not going to mess up because we are professionals. So the average value of a function in this case is two over five pi. And that would be uh, the answer in this particular problem. So kind of an interesting problem. It did require a use substitution. Uh, we did change the limits of integration. You can be lazy and not change the limits and then do it incorrectly and then go back to, the, to your x variable and use the original limits but I don't recommend that. I once spent two weeks on a problem because I got into the habit of doing that and I couldn't do that in that particular problem. So I think the moral is go through it, uh, embrace it. I personally think it's better to change the limits and better to do it correctly than try to skip steps. I hope this has been helpful and hopefully you've learned some mathematics with this video. Good luck and keep doing mathematics.